Javier, this is the Experta model here, and it's great because we're seeing the machine here, we're seeing all the elements of the machine. We're seeing the base, we're seeing the column. Just tell us where, the, where this model fits in amongst Correa's products. How this model fits in the, in the global range of product? Well, this is our smallest uh, bed type uh, milling machine in our whole range, and uh, it features one meter by one meter, one meter in vertical, one meter in cross, and the x-axis starts in 2.5 up to 4.5. So is, is this kind of your entry level machine? Some, some companies may have vertical machining centers. Would this be a progression from that? Yeah, well, this machine in fact is competing with uh, the typical machining center uh, traverses. Well, usually the machining center covers 800 by 800. So this machine is slightly bigger in, in, in working envelope. So why does somebody select a machine like this? Why do they go for this? Well, because this is a milling machine, so compared to the machine in center, first of all, we are not using electro spindle, first of all. We, we always use a mechanical indexing or multiple position head. This is the main difference. Normally, machine in centers, they use just a, a direct spindle. Sometimes it's electro spindle, sometimes it's a mechanical transmission. So flexibility is the first thing. So if you want to produce or you want to machine many different parts with a lot of flexibility but not long series, this is the way to go compared to the machining center. Tell me about the makeup of this machine. I, I see here we've got, it's a two-piece casting, or you've got, a, you've got a base casting and then a column casting together. Just two pieces, correct? Yes, two pieces. So we have like the column and, and, the, and the complete x-axis. So in the x-axis bed, we integrate as well the, the chip conveyor um, gap. Either side as well, by the looks? Yes, either side, in both sides. So this is the moving table, Javier. What's, what are we moving on here? L linear roller guides? Yeah, we are using two linear uh, guideways, and, um, which is a standard in this machine. This machine, we use two guideways, uh, two linear guideways for the x-axis, two linear guideways for the y-axis, and two linear guideways for the, for the vertical axis. And do you consider a machine with the, the table moving here a, a more rigid construction than a traveling column machine? Is it better to have a, a, a table moving than the, than the column? Well, there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, having a moving table, uh, normally you have a more accurate machine because the distances between the guideways and the spindle is closer. Um, so moving table is more accurate respect to traveling column, but a traveling column is more flexible because you can work with different working areas and in the moving table you just can work with uh, one working area. Of course you can load many components on top of the table, but you, can, you cannot save load and load time on the machine. Now it's quite a, a straightforward machine when we're looking at the x-axis and the z-axis, but the y-axis here is, is moving on a RAM. That always kind of makes me think about uh, spindle droop and stuff like that. Is, is, is that the case with this model? Well, in, in all the machines, in all horizontal machines, you have the same problem with the, with the RAM uh, drop effect. But in, in Nicolas Correa, we always work this, this problem using two systems. One is the, the structure we use for our machines. We normally use one of the biggest cross sections, um, biggest cross sections in the market, which, all, which obviously increase the stiffness, so reduce the drop effect. But and at the same time, we always use mechanical systems to, to adjust the, the- To compensate. To compensate the, the, the angular error of the tool. Because the problem of, of the RAM is, is that you can compensate the straightness error in the movement with a table, with electronic compensation. But the angular error of the tool cannot be compensated unless and until you use a mechanical system. Because uh, when, when, I'm, when I'm looking at your RAM, you've got quite a huge casting underneath it, which is obviously supporting it. You've also got a, 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 a linear roller guide at the base and also on the side. So that, does, that, that does, would give you confidence looking at the way this is built. Yeah, this construction will help also in, our, in, our, in this drop effect of the RAM. Normally, uh, this is a lateral RAM. Uh, bed time machine, but there are different constructions to guide the RAM. We always use what we call L-type cross saddle. Always using one guideway on the bottom side and one guideway on, on the lateral side of the RAM. And if you see the cross saddle section is, is, is passive, and this is because we try always to look for the maximum stiffness in our machine. What about this, this head here? How many options do we have for your, you know, how many heads can we change to and from? Well, normally we have automatic indexing heads. This is the most common uh, head in these kind of machines. And uh, talking about indexing heads, usually we have 
um, one head which is a little bit more complex and is, let's say, our state of the art producing heads like this one, which is called UAD head. It's indexing head, but we have an international patent which permits us to rotate every 0 0.02 degrees in both, both rotations. And uh, we can go up to 6,000 RPM in continuous. Can, can you machine with the axis? A simultaneous machine no, in no, movement? No, or no, because it's, no, because it is indexing head. So in this, in this kind of machines, we just, uh, we just use indexing heads. So it's a 3 plus 2 operation. Yeah. And there are several options, though, are there, on this head. So I wouldn't just have to go for that. I've got other, other options. Well, we have options like a different coolant through a spindle pressure, external coolant, air blow inside, external air for different materials that you want to cut. And it's very interesting to understand how we make the spindle transmission. Because in all of our machines, if you go inside the RAM, we always use the same construction for all our machines. It's a spindle motor, it's a, it's a gearbox, then it's a carbon fiber shaft, and then we go to the head. So in these machines also, permits us to keep the gravity center of the, of the spindle transmission on the back part of the machine. So also this will help us in this ram drop effect because the, the weight of the motor and the gearbox is on back of the machine, not in the front. Okay, now this is an ISO 50, isn't it? And it does say in the brochure you've got four options on this head, four different options, correct? Yeah, we have different heads. We have also, this is a universal geometry. We have also orthogonal geometry, so 90 degrees uh, both rotating axis. And then we have also manual head. It's very unusual, but still we have this option. What's the most popular of those four? This, this one. This is the universal automatic indexing head UAD, which is the top class head in terms of features. Okay, now on, on, on the tool changer here, this tool mount, interesting to see here. It's quite explanatory by actually seeing it with, uh, with the shell off it. Is it a modular design? Do I see here that you, you're just going to bolt a tool changer to this? And if so, how many tools can you have? Yeah, well, it's a totally modular system, and uh, the most popular uh, tool changer is a 40 and 60 tools, but also we can, we can install up to 80, 80 tools. So is this a popular model? Are you selling lots of these machines every year? Yeah, exactly, yes. And, and who's buying them? What sort, what sort of companies, what are they making yeah. on this type Normally, of machine? Normally, the best-type machines we produce in Nicolas Cora Group are going to European markets. Um, Germany, France, England, Italy, Spain. You have a lot of competition in this market, Javier. What, what, why, in your opinion, is the, is the Correa one of the best options for people to select? Well, the first option is the cheaper mobile rate of the machine, and the second one is the, the, the head technology. What do you mean by chip removal rate? I mean, it's a very, it's a, a lot of people talk about it, mm. but how do you achieve, you know, well, success in, with that? In Nicolas Correa, we understand this as a, okay, in your design, you can install a, a motor of a certain kilowatts and also a gearbox to provide a spindle with a certain torque. This is fine. I mean, you can put wherever you can fit into the RAM. So at that moment, we are not cutting chips, but then, the key of any machine is that you can convert this power into chips volume in an unstable way and with different tools and even in with hard materials and even in difficult situations. And this is when, when the difference between machines is more and more, more evident. And, and what are those elements comprising of? Are we talking about the weight of the machine, the way you've constructed it, the fact it's only a two-piece uh, two -piece, two -piece construction? Is it those things? Everything is involved. Uh, the structure of the machine, cross sections and the calculation of the structure, the guiding system, uh, the motion mechanism as well, and of course, and very important, the, 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 the milling head, because everything starts from the milling head. So if the milling head is not strong enough, the machine will not be able to, to use this power. What sort of power do, does your milling head generate? What are the, what's the options? In Nicolas Correa, because it is our strategy, we use the same UAD head in all our machines. So it depends in which machine we install this head, we put a different power. This head has been designed to hold 60 kilowatts in S1 and a torque of 1,500 newton meters. Obviously, in this machine, obviously, we cannot utilize 60 kilowatts, but uh, the head has been designed and is able to hold this, this power and this torque. And have you got direct feedback scales on these machines as well to help you with those uh, precision requirements? Yeah, of course, this is our standard in the last 15 years, we, we, we always use a linear scales in the three axis. 
Okay, brilliant. It's been a great, um, great insight into this. I'm now going to go and speak with Ian, who uh, operates from DTS UK in the UK, who supply these machines. It'll be interesting to find out where he's selling. Ian, then it's great to see these machines with the guarding on ready to go. Where, where are you putting these in the UK? Who's buying them? These machines would mainly go into the dye and mould industry, um, general machining where people are looking for a larger capacity away from VMCs, uh, railway industry, those real type of large type of machines. And, and would you kind of agree with Javier when he's talking about going up from a machining centre, this is your sort of entry level bed milling yeah, offering? Yeah, this, this is the smallest machine we do is the Experta 20. Um, so. It, it starts off at two metres, gives us one metre in the Y axis and one metre in the Z axis, uh, going up to a four and a half metre bed in the X axis. Do you know what kind of weight you could get on that table on the biggest machine? Uh, biggest machine on this type is actually 10.5 tonnes, 10,500 kilograms. And, and that, that would have to be some application to go up to that size, wasn't it? Have you, have you seen machines doing parts like that? We have got machines in the field in the UK doing that type of work, yes. And with, with the offering of this machine, is the Heidenhain control something that you find is a standard in our in the UK or in the industry? Um, certainly in this type of industry it is, yes. Um, ma the majority of machines we sell into the UK are i9 controls. Um, so and, uh, so we, we tend to find that in this type of industry it is, yes. It's great to have a really good technical insight from Javier on the machine, the ins and outs of it, and seeing it with the, with the guarding off. For me, I asked him the question about why does he think these machines are better than his competitors? One of the things that strikes me is the amount of machines we see from Cory in the market that are 20 and 30 years old. That kind of answers that question in itself, doesn't it? Yes, there are lots of these machines in the UK. Um, we can go back probably 20 to 25 years at least uh, with machines still out there, still working. Um, obviously, slightly different heads now to what we've got. We have moved on technology-wise. But yeah, definitely lots of machines into the, in the UK market still running. And then with the expert model, is this, am I right in saying from a UK perspective, is this your kind of, your entry level machine, is this your, your, your first offering to customers when they start looking at bed mills? Yes, this would be, yeah. We would, we would go with the expert um, and then potentially move on to the Norma after, after, if, if the discussion goes that way.